The story of my father, Bruce Sundland, began in 1920, born in Providence, Rhode Island, to Walter and Jeanette Sundland. This curly-haired boy with the angelic face would grow up to lead an extraordinary life. On the spectrum of grave to grand, Bruce Sundland has done it all. He likes to say, if you have a disability, make use of it. He learned that as the only Jewish boy in his class. He had to run fast from the kids who wanted to beat him up for being different. His speed and agility would have sent him to the Olympics as a broad jumper, but instead, the world waged a war and a fighter was born. At the tender age of 22, he became a bomber pilot in World War II. This time, when the young Jewish man was shot down in Nazi territory, running would save him again. He ended up at a woman's home in Belgium. She went and got a bottle and a toothbrush. The bottle was alcohol, and she attacked my wounds with alcohol and a toothbrush. And now, 60 years later, I can still feel it. <laughs> that woman would later turn his parachute into a wedding dress for her daughter. His dramatic beginning set the stage for a career that served President John F. Kennedy and ultimately the people of Rhode Island. In 1977, he returned to his boyhood home of Providence as president of the Outlet Company. It had one store, one city, and one station. When I resigned from the Outlet Company, it had 107 stores and 15 stations. After two unsuccessful bids for governor, voters had a change of heart, hoping Sunland's success in the business world would save their state. They elected him governor with the largest majority in Rhode Island history in 1990. But the love affair was short. Only hours after his swearing in, he ordered the banks to be shut down. I am declaring a bank emergency in Rhode Island. Voters staged a modern day Boston Tea Party. He's never been afraid of public scrutiny, even when the headlines were embarrassing, from a fight over plastic forks, to shooting raccoons at his home in Newport, to reporters hounding him. It's always fun with you, Sean. What are you here for today? He was re-elected in 1992, but two years later, he became the only incumbent to be voted out of office in a primary. Yet the state still honored him by naming the new airport terminal after him for his fight to build it. His personal life has been just as colorful as his public life. After being married five times, he's just celebrated 10 years with his beloved wife, Susie. In our family, we like to joke that the wives keep getting younger. In all, my father has four children and four grandchildren. Three sons, Tracy, Peter, and Stuart, now in their 50s. My arrival was a bit of a surprise, but since life had taught him to react under fire, he would do the right thing here, too. I imagine uh, that they'll, I'll get more than the usual number of Father's Day cards. <laughs> <laughs> Ten years after our meeting, my father would give me away to my husband, Dennis, only 36 hours after leaving the hospital where he'd been gravely ill for two weeks. Once again, duty called him, this time to the dance floor. Even as he celebrates his 90th birthday, Bruce Sundland still keeps a schedule that would make anyone tired. Because I believe that retirement is a terminal illness, I can prove it in court. From teaching at the University of Rhode Island to now writing his memoir. Public service is satisfying. Public service is necessary. His life is the kind of story movies are made of. As I show you a bit of it today, we just want to say, happy birthday, Dad, and thanks for making a difference.